Um, forgive me if this is too personal. But, um, it is you, not, okay. whatever it is. <laughs> That's why you're here. Uh, do you have any spiritual beliefs? And if so, what are they? Yes, I do. I believe, so I was raised as a Hindu. I'm a practicing Hindu today. If you're going to call, you know, a good chance for you to meet a Purva. You, I'm putting it on the spot a little bit. Uh, but this is something that's very important to our family and the way we raise our kids. We're Hindu. I was raised in a Hindu household. I went to Catholic schools. I uh, ended up, we're all very studious. And so I ended up studying, I graduated at the top of my class, but that included four years of religion. So I, made, I read the Bible more closely than probably more most of my classmates did. I got the religion award. Uh, I think that's, I probably wouldn't have done that if I'd gone to a Hindu school, though. <laughs> I, w I wouldn't have gotten that if I'd gone to Hindu school, though, because then you just roll your eyes a little bit, right? Because, like, if you're just getting what your parents taught you, that's what, that's what this was true for the other kids at the Catholic high school is, like, okay, they'd been getting this first through eighth grade. Whereas for me, it was fresh. It was different. It was something that actually meant something to me. And so I remain on, I'm on the board of St. X High School. Actually, until I, until I launched this presidential race two months ago, I was on the board of St. X High School. My, my belief is that there is a true God, that there is something higher, that that God resides within each of us. So in the Catholic tradition, I think broadly in the Christian tradition, the way we learned it was we are equal in the eyes of God, and so we are equal in the eyes of each other because we're made in the image of God. The way we say it and teach it to our kids and the way our parents taught it to us is that we are all equal in the eyes of each other because we're equal in the eyes of God because God resides in each of us. So we say it in a slightly different way, but, but the point's the same, right? The punchline's the same. And I think that's a big part of what we're missing is it's what matters in America today amongst people who are true believers in a one true God. It's not the differences in the way you describe that God that are actually the divisions that divide us. It's not even like it might have once been between those who are truly secular, like real deep philosophers like Immanuel Kant, right, and somebody who was St. Thomas Aquinas, right, who actually get to similar places. But Kant is fiercely secular, and Aquinas probably made a greater contribution to the Enlightenment that then formed the backdrop of this Judeo-Christian founding of this country. But they were saying the same things, but one is religious, but through a secularist. It's not even between religious and secularism. It's between the actual religious foundation of this country, and the rise of new religions that fail to admit that they're religions. Right? That's actually the real breaking point in this country. It, wokeism, climatism, transgenderism, gender ideology, COVIDism. These are cult-like religions. I call them more like cults because at least religions like ours have withstood the test of time. Uh, you know, these have not. They're fleeting religions. They're cults. But I think that's actually the moment today where it's the moment for people of faith People who believe in a true God live their lives in accordance with that belief and act on those convictions. That's what's missing in our culture. And I think that that's a precondition for our national revival. Our, our two sons are still in nap time here, but, you know, Purva, uh, between, you know, we're, 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 you know, this is a very important period in their lives. So one of the things we talked about is can't preach about fatherlessness and then not be present, even if I am running for president. So we're traveling as a family to do that together. But it was also a period in our lives where for the next, there are periods where last two years, you know, I, I've worn one hat. Next couple of years, Apoorva is, you know, was prepared to say, okay, in raising our kids, this is for our three-year-old son, a pivotal period. How are we going to impart those values to him? And, you know, I don't, I don't know if you wanted to say a few words about, about what faith means to us as a family. First of all, I wanted to thank you all for coming on your Sunday to hear my husband. Um, you know, I've heard from him for a long time, but <laughs> it's, it's really honestly a blessing and a miracle to me that all of you would give your time to listen to what he has to say, because I think he's saying some things that are true, but I appreciate you coming to hear it. So a little bit about how we think about God and at least how it plays into our lives. So Vic told you a little bit, he, you know, he was a nerdy kid. I was also a nerdy kid. We both met uh, at Yale when I was in med school. He was in law school. And I don't know about you guys, but when I was in high school and college, or at least I know a lot of other people going in that age, they get a little 
they don't know if God exists. I, you know, I was with, I went to some kids, a lot, a lot of people who thought that they were too smart for God, that God, you know, that, and they're not going to be, I'm not a chump. I, I know, I know science. I see, I read, I know biology. I know physics. It, there, there's no God in there. And I think I was a lot of that in my life when I was younger. And, but that's, that was just those, you know, eight years when I was in that time of my life. Before that, my parents, my, my mom, my dad, they raised us with God. Every day, my dad and my mom wake up, they pray. Every night, when my dad comes home, he's also a surgeon, he comes home and prays and thanks God for allowing him to help people. And that's how I grew up. And what helped me find God was, it was a journey. First part was meeting this person here. And then having children and having my job and seeing all of the ways that I feel like someone is, there's a power taking care of me. No matter how smart I am, no matter how good at whatever I do I can be, there, I cannot do it alone. Someone, somewhere is taking care of us, of all of us. And yes, there are terrible things happening in the world, but what I tell my son when I put him down at bed at night is, because he tells us he's three years old, and he'll, tell, he'll, he'll do anything to delay bedtime. And so what he does, and he knows it works, is he'll tell us with tears in his eyes, you're going to leave me all, and I'm going to be all alone. And what do you do to your three-year-old when he says that? And so I tell him, you know what, hon? You are never alone, because God is with you. Your dad and I are downstairs, so first of all, don't worry. <laughs> We're just downstairs. But God is with you. You're strong, you are loved, and you can do, you can go to sleep because you know you're safe. And honestly, the world is a big place. And without God, that is scary. It is scary. So thank you. Thank you to God for bringing all of you here. Um, you know, we don't know where this journey is going to lead, but we really appreciate you coming and caring so much about America. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it's funny. I mean, when, when we put him to bed at night, he, he's, when a porter tells him that part of it, you know, he usually is running around helter-skelter, you know, where's my sixth teddy bear before I go to bed, et cetera. But he, he dials into that part. He knows she's telling him something important, something that he doesn't know. I don't know, if he, I don't know how he thinks about God. He's three years old, but he knows it's something different than what the runaround of his day was. And there's something about that that tells me about even the moment we had this morning, right? So we went to, we went to church this morning, and you know, they were kind enough to, to welcome us and, and give me an opportunity to say a few words to the congregation. But we spent two hours there, and for me, that was a moment to collect myself in the middle of this campaign trail and remember that there is a God that actually matters beyond what sometimes in our modern American life can just feel like the aimless passage of time. Like there's more to life than the random passage of time. There's more to life than, you know, our next meal or our next complaint or whatever. We're here for a reason. And, and I think that's part of what gives me, gives us the sense of purpose, making the most of this short time we have been given that God has given us on this great earth created by God, we better, by God, make the best use of it we can. And if we have been so blessed in the short time, I'm 37 years old, a poor was 33, here we are, having lived the full blessings that God gave us and this country gave us, then in the short time we have left, that's part of what gives us this calling to want to give back in the way we know how. And as ludicrous as it sounds, the thing we concluded was that was actually going to be by leading the country as the next U.S. president. But I don't think it's, when I look at the country and look at the leadership vacuum, it doesn't seem so ludicrous after that. We each have to just look ourselves in the mirror and ask ourselves how we're each going to do our part.